with this finger, left hand, right hand, either one, yes? Hold up your finger, please. Thank you. All right, so you have lips, yes? <laughs> so everybody do this. So if somebody cannot stand it, they have to talk to each other, what do you do? Very good. This is going to be a good part. Rich Blazer co-founded Infinite Energy with Darren Cook in 1994. Friends since their days as students, the two men discovered their business strengths balance each other out. Through this partnership, Infinite Energy has become the largest independent natural gas marketer and one of the largest privately held companies in Florida. In addition to his role as CEO, Rich supports Infinite Energy's focus on education by mentoring future entrepreneurs and local leadership organizations. He strives to restructure the Florida electricity market through the Florida Energy Freedom Movement, a group he established, uh, a, a group that was established by his company. Outside of work, Rich is an avid athlete who has completed multiple Ironman triathlons. His belief that a healthy workforce is a productive workforce led the company to build an on-site gym at their Deansville headquarters. Rich graduated from Florida State University with a bachelor's degree of science uh, in finance. Uh, he currently resides with his family in Gainesville, Florida. Please welcome our keynote speaker, Rich Blazer, co-founder and CEO of Infinite Energy. Thank you. What an honor it is to be here again tonight celebrating another new year with you all. On the way here, my girlfriend found out that she was a monkey. <laughs> she was very proud of us. As we were driving over, she continued to say all the wonderful things that a monkey is. I agree with her. She has a lot of those qualities. As she continued to read, one of the things she found out was that supposedly the year of the monkey isn't great for a person that is actually the year of the monkey. That year is not the very best for them. And she looked at me with a frown on her face. Is 2016 not going to be a good year for me? I said, sure it is. She was worried, so as she continued to read about the monkey and the other signs that are equivalent and very good for the monkey. As she read them, me being the goat was not one of them. And then I too started frowning. This can't be. We can still be together. We can fight against the zodiac. We can fight against our sign and show that the goat and the monkey could be as one. Made her very happy. Then the drive was much easier. <laughs> that drive would have been horrible if she continued to think that 2016 and the year of the monkey was not going to be a good one for her and that I was not her soulmate. <laughs> like, as I was thinking about it, could I change being a, a goat to one that was compatible with her? And she said, No, you're a goat. You can't change. So, I was very happy to, get, to see that. How many of you, I've been, I've been working on this theory, as you heard of talking about one of the things we like to do is what, one of the, our corporate citizenship at Infinite Energy is about education. And so what I've been watching is how do we in education as we go through elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and then some go for a post baccalaureate degree, we continue in our education. But what I have noticed is that once we graduate from our final school, we stop learning. I believe that the reason this is is because there's not a 
map and a roadway to actually know what we're supposed to do. Think about it. Start out in kindergarten, you graduate from fifth grade, you graduate from middle school, you graduate from high school, you graduate from college, and then you get a job. And then what do you do? Tired. But that's what's happened. So we, we, we do all this work in education, in school, and then we get a job, and then we stop learning. What I believe is that we should all be ferocious learners, constantly learning, just because there's not a path of where we should go, how we should do it, when we should do it, that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. One way that I have this theory, one way I've been watching it, so, is through reading. I was not a reader before I met my business partner, Darren. Darren, as we talked, he said, Rich, you really need to be a ferocious reader. You need to read everything and anything you can. Why would I want to do that? I'm not in school anymore. There's so much to learn through books and through other people's experiences. So, I mean, raise, let me see for a raise of hand and keep your hand up. How many people have read one book in the last 12 months? Okay. How many people have, keep your hands up. Now, drop your hands, keep your hands up if you've read at least six books. Wow. All right, this is getting interesting. How many have read at least 12 books? In a year, last 12 months. Now this doesn't count like Harlequin romance and those kind of things. <laughs> the trash novels, no. Okay. 24 books. We got 24 over here. 24. 50 books. Is that amazing? So look around. Everyone that has read at least one book in the last 12 months, you're ahead of 98% of the people in the United States. Wow. One book. So I have a bit of dyslexia, so reading a book for me is very hard. So I have audible.com. I read at least one audio book every month. And it's not a trash novel. It's not Fifty Shades of Grey. But it's something that I want to learn in my personal and my professional development. And then I have a hardback or a paperback book that I'm reading at the same time. What I can tell you from what I found is that when you read, your mind expands. And brought it here. When you read, opportunities are in front of you. When you read, you're, you're increasing your education. And so for this, I challenge you. So one thing is, is to read is good. But if you've read that many books, 24 books, more than 24 books of some of the people in the room, what I would say is it would be a travesty if you didn't implement some of the stuff that you read. So if you read one book, and if you implement a lot of stuff from that in a 12-month period, then that's enough book. It's really to, to learn from the books that you're reading and then to implement those in your life of what you see that you want to accomplish and, and attain and change. And so setting those goals. So what I, I would like to do before and put to the people in this room, if you've read one book, then let's say you read another one for the next year. Find things that are going to make you excited that you want to learn. There's so much out there. It's been a, uh, a journey for me. When I went through, we have a, uh, a library in the office, and so I brought a stack of books that I had read, and I didn't realize that they went up to my shoulder. I brought them in for the employees to read. Once again, you know, I'm a big believer in our employees. And what the best thing we can do is pass down the knowledge to those employees. 
that we want. So in this year of month in the fiery month, have ferocious, ferocious goals and things to reach for and things that you want to attain personally and professionally. Sit down and write down goals for yourself. I would venture to say that every single person in this room has achieved at least one goal in their life. When we get out of academia, the goal, the way that we can attain goals and reach goals is to write them down. Write down your personal goals, write down your professional goals, write down your family goals, write down whatever you want to attain in the next 12 months. By the end of this year, from what I will tell you, if you write those down and actually focus on them, I'm pretty sure when I see you here next year that you will have attained some of those goals. And then the last piece is don't set the goals too low. You've heard me talk before about BHAG goals. Those are big, hairy, audacious goals. Goals that you can't imagine that you could ever achieve in your life. 